specifically to animate text, I want to show people how to use the text tool, right? Real quick, real quick. So let's do something like this. I'm grabbing the text tool, I'm grabbing a, a color, and in properties, right? I'm just going to create uh, a text field animated text. So now this is just treat this as any other kind of artwork on the stage, right? I can, uh, while it's selected, I can click in here. I'm using the down arrow and I can scroll through all the different fonts I have. Those are some crazy fonts. Let's go up to here at the very top. Uh, I can select it this way, just like you can in Photoshop. I can scroll around and, and pick something out. Sometimes I just like, if I don't know what I want, I'll click in here. I wish Photoshop did this. It, it doesn't do it for me. Um, I can click and just use the down arrow. And I can select, I can just see in real time what's happening. Like, uh, let's see, I want a cool font. Let's check out. That's kind of fun. Yeah, let's do that. I, it's, I like this. Um, and if I want, I can change the size of it, right? I can, you know, you can use this as a hot text slider to change the size. It maxes out at 96, but it really doesn't. I can type in, say, 500, hit enter, and now it's at that at that um, at that size but you'll notice because my text field was was only so wide it just kind of it broke it down right like that into different lines but I want to change that so I'm going to double click and up here in the upper right I can stretch this out to be a little bit wider this is really a huge font so let's bring this down to say 300 that's a little bit more manageable you know and it has all the same uh, you know, settings, I can have it centered and stuff like that. All right, so let's just do a quick little animation. There's a couple ways to do this. I'm going to duplicate this for now just to show you. I'm holding down Alt key. I want to just keep this as, a, as an editable text field. Let's just say you don't want it to be an editable text field. You can hit Control B while it's selected. It, do that once and it breaks these apart into individual but still editable text fields, right? This is still editable text but now they're just different. Let's just say you wanted to still make them edit, editable and you wanted to whatever, customize it somehow or whatever. But let's just say you didn't, you break it apart again, and now it's actual vectors. These are actual vector shapes that you can go crazy with and draw with and do whatever, okay? Just so you know, that's working basics with uh, text. Let's just say you wanted to do some sort of simple animation, okay? Modify, just like we did with the comet when we created it. Let's go to modify and convert to symbol. And let's just call this text. And now, once something, again, is a symbol, it's part of our library, it gets added. I can drag different instances to the stage, yada, yada, yada. But select an instance of a symbol, and what we also can do is in properties, there's a whole color effects section, and it's above looping. We don't want looping. So let's just hide that. Uh, and inside of color effects, we have none, brightness, tint, advanced, and alpha. Let's fade in text. Everyone loves to fade text, right? All right, so let's, before we do that, here's what I'm gonna do. Let's have it text fade in starting from frame five, right? So, uh, so everything's on frame one by default here. I'm gonna click and drag frame one to frame five. And let's go, let's make it a nice slow fade in. So on frame 30, I'm gonna hit F6 and create another keyframe. So we've got no animation really because it just pops up in the first keyframe and the, and the second keyframe are exactly the same. So since we know we want the text to fade in, we want the second keyframe to be at 100%, which it is, a completely opaque. Let's go to the first keyframe, click on the instance of the symbol. You'll see the properties panel changes. It updates to reflect whatever, you know, whatever options we have. I'm going to go down to alpha and just make sure that slider is set to zero. So now frame five, right? We get to that frame five, the playhead hits it. We don't see anything because it's invisible, but it's there. If we click on frame five, you'll see that bounding box for that symbol is still there. We get to frame 30 and boom, but we want it to fade in gracefully over time, right? So now I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna select or right, right click anywhere inside in between these two keyframes. And I'm gonna say create classic tween. And that interpolates over time the animated text and the property that is alpha, okay? Now let's take it, I don't know, one more step further. Let's say we want it to grow a little bit as it's fading up. 
I'm going to go to, I can either go to the second keyframe and make it a little bigger or go to the first keyframe and make it a little smaller. I'm going to go to the second keyframe. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Two ways to do that. I can click on the free transform tool, hold down, hold down shift and just grab a corner and bring it up a little bit, right? Another way to do that is control alt S or scale and rotate, which I think is under modify. And I never use, uh, I never use this. So let's go to transform scale and here it is. It's a little bit buried. Control alt S is just way easier. So I recommend that, but it brings up this menu where I can type in, I don't know, 110, 110, something like that. Now that tween is also going to not only interpolate, uh, interpolate the alpha, but also the scale. Something like that, okay? So that's an easy way to animate text. Another very quick way to animate text is, let's create a new layer. Let's hide this layer. Let's drag a new instance of my symbol, okay, to here and place it in the middle. Let's, let's have this fly in real quick and let's make it a little bit smaller. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna move this first keyframe to somewhere down here, okay? And while it's here, I'm gonna create a new layer. Okay, I'm gonna draw something on this layer. And I am going to first, I'm gonna create a rectangle, but I wanna go to window, I wanna go to, I'm gonna go a little bit fast here because I'm running low on time. My God, it's only 20 minutes left. I'm gonna go to linear gradient and I'm gonna click here on the very first uh, tab there and click black and I'm going to click black again. Both are black, but while the second one is highlighted, I'm going to go and zero out that alpha, make it completely transparent. Okay. And let's just add that to swatches. We can get rid of that now. Grab the rectangle tool. There's no stroke. Good. That's what I want. And I'm just going to, for now, just click and I want to basically get, get it right in terms of the height of my actual text. Something like that will be fine. Like that. Okay, perfect. Uh, but I want to not have it going in this direction. I want this to be alpha out and that to be dark black. So again, the gradient transform tool comes to the rescue. There's a rotation tool. If I hold down shift, it's going to allow me to snap it to, to, I think, 45 degree increments. And I've just reversed it. Great. And now while it's here, I'm going to say, you know what, make this, I'm going to call it blur. Oh, it's going to be a symbol and then boom. So now what I want to do is just hold down shift and I can drag it across the stage. Holding down shift kind of constrains it along that axis. And let's have this about right there, starting right here, okay? And now I'm gonna just keyframe this. I could motion tween it, but it's gonna be so fast, I don't need a motion tween to deal with. Let's just bring this in like this. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna take advantage of easing. So yes, let's do this. Uh, no, no, I'm wrong. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna do something else with easing. I'll show you in a second. Let's do that again. Let's have this move in really fast. Sometimes keyframes are the only and best way. And then do this. And this will be the last frame. Something like this. Okay. Now it doesn't, it's not going to make sense yet, but that's fine. So boom. Okay. So we have this. And what I'm actually going to do is click on the last frame, click on the symbol of the blur and go to alpha and make this just a little less strong and maybe same thing with the second to last keyframe but a little more opaque so it almost fades out over time okay now i'm going to drag these keyframes down here and push them back so and on this frame the very last one hit f7 or go to insert timeline blank keyframe and what that does is it removes the contents of anything on the stage that's in that frame just takes just gets rid of it okay boom so now we've created a nice little, you know, what looks like a really fast moving motion blur of text that comes in. If you want to make it a little bit more realistic, which I like to always do, let's have this, let's do this. Create a keyframe about five frames down, maybe four, but for now that's fine, right? And let's just nudge this down with using the arrow keys, like 10 or 15 or so pixels. Create, right click over any of those frames, create classic tween. And since the classic tween is now selected as well, we're going to 
add a little bit of easing out, a lot of easing out. So now what happens is it, it provides a little bit more sense of motion, right? And what I'm going to also do is back this up a little bit so that on this frame we see both. We see a little bit of that text and we see a little bit of the gradient. It just kind of helps marry the two a little bit. So there's another way to animate text. So you've got two ways to animate text. Okay. There you go. I hope that was helpful. Oh, he is focused today. <laughs> um, yes, Animate also has HTML5 Canvas. Exactly. I, wa uh, I want the text to move everywhere, zoom in, uh, out, and rotate. Fine. You can do that. That's easy stuff, man. So again, once you have this tween going, you can, uh, you can go in and rotate stuff. All right, any, anywhere. Just grab the free transform tool. And if you rotate it, that's what's going to happen. And if that's, you know, not exactly what you were looking for, you can go back here and start with it like this. You know, or whatever. I'm not sure what uh, exactly how you want it, but at least you have the basics of how to start moving stuff. Uh, you could do something where, let's go to library again. He's focused. He's really focused. You could do something like, uh, let's do, I'm going to move the center point down to the bottom, okay? And let's start with it coming off the screen. Something like this. In fact, if we want to make sure it's aligned perfectly in the center, let's go here. Make sure align to stage is select by default. It isn't. Align to stage is not. So select it. And let's align it to the stage, hitting this middle button here. And then let's do something where it falls in. So let's go bang. And I'm holding down shift and have it hit like here. Okay. Now I'm going to do a little squash and stretch, but you never want to squash and stretch at this stage. And I'll show you in a second. Classic tween ease. It's the coffee, Mike. Mike. I had a, like, I, I'm working here. Hold on. I need more. This is a good time of day for me because, you know, they actually found um, blood in my coffee stream once. The doctor said, no, 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 no. Um, all right, so I have a little bit of easing in. And so this falls in, right? Boom. And let's have it like squash and stretch and kind of bounce a little bit, right? You never, what you don't want to do though, and, uh, and this is a common mistake, is that people, oh, it's hit. I'm going to start to squash and stretch it like this. But that's not right, because what it starts to do, it starts to actually squash it on its way down. And nothing is going to start to squash and stretch until it actually, after it hits something immovable, then it starts to deform, right? So you never want to apply any squashing and stretching until after it's hit. So here it's hit, and now I create a keyframe here. And now I'm going to start to just squash and stretch it. And I can keyframe this if I want. And just go and I can turn on onion skin. I haven't even showed you guys onion skin yet, but there's this little button down here called onion skin. These brackets show up that let me um, see frames past and, uh, and future. And the ones, these are marked in green because I have them customized. You can customize the colors. I just want to see the ones in the past, which are these. And maybe the last two frames. There you go. Okay, so you can get the sense of the timing. Let's make this squash and stretch even more. So let's initially make it squash a lot more. And now remember too, you don't want to just squash it in one direction because that's changing the volume of something, which is physically impossible. So as much as you squash down, you also want to try to squash in the opposite direction as well. That's kind of a critical thing. Let's go about here. And one more keyframe, but make it a little less squashy and stretchy as we go to show to sort of simulate resistance a little bit because it's going to get to a certain point where it's not going to stretch that much and now let's start to bring it back up he's focused look at him go like this and maybe it starts to move upward a little bit and now what i'm going to do is this i'm going to grab a frame where no squashing and stretching has been applied so i can return it back to its sort of normal state. I'm going to hit Command-C, right? 
And I'm going to go a few frames down and hit, and hit F7, which is blank keyframe. And now I'm going to do a command shift seven, which is a paste in place. It's also going to like edit and paste in place here. And while it's selected, let's move it up to about here. I don't know where we'll make it up. So it's going to do this, but I'm going to apply a right click and apply a classic tween and easing out. So what this is going to look like hopefully is like that animated text. Maybe we'll make it go up a little bit higher to the center. And we can actually adjust the timing, select that last keyframe and go, maybe that's too slow. That's a little too slow. There. Ta-da! Anyway, yeah, you get the idea.